wondering what Legoland theme park in Florida is like, and whether or not it's a good choice for you and your family. Join us as we share our day in the park and share a few opinions and tips based on our experience. Yo, welcome back. And so we just pulled up and parked at Legoland theme park in Florida, and we're gonna go check it out, see what it's like. As you know, we're those people that always show up in Orlando and don't necessarily think in advance to book reservations for Disney. And so we're still always looking for things to do. And today we came up with Legoland. Let's see how this goes. We visited during the December holidays, which is also during peak season. All of the Disney parks were completely booked and Universal was also unavailable on the day we visited Legoland. So I'm guessing we were probably dealing with larger crowds for the Legoland Park too. Okay, so we've made our way inside the park and our strategy is to go to the back of the park right away because my wife read that in the tip somewhere and to see if we can start working our way forward. So uh, let's see if we can make this trek to the back of the park and then start taking place in some activities, taking place. I said that wrong, but you know what I mean. Let's go. We made an attempt at grabbing some coffee to get our day started. Okay, detour. On second thought, before we get to the first ride, we had to make a pit stop to fuel ourselves. Getting coffee was a fail because they only had espresso and Americanos available, no regular coffee. Nevertheless, we powered through and our first stop was at Miniland where they have these amazing Lego replicas of famous landmarks from all over the world. It's amazing what you can accomplish with a Lego. Okay, neat little area right here where they have all of these cool Lego creations and they even have an entire recreation, well, it's not the entire Vegas Strip, but they have a recreation of hotels on the Vegas Strip. So it's pretty neat to be able to see well, because one of them is New York, New York, and the Luxor. So basically, it's a recreation of a recreation, but still pretty cool. The Lego creation of the Manhattan skyline is absolutely impressive, along with other familiar sights throughout the world. After sightseeing in Miniland, we made our way around to the safari track. Okay, so finally we made it to our first ride of the day and it took us a while, but we're on our way. The Safari Trek was a great way to get warmed up and it contained many more examples of cool Lego creations as all of the animals on the Trek were made from Legos. After the trek, we found ourselves in the Ninjago section of the park. Here, they had physical types of activities for small kids, such as these spinning poles and climbing walls. Then we were on to the Coast Guard Academy. Driving these slow motorized boats was a blast. And yes, you're really driving it. Okay, here we are in this boating ride, whatever. Lifeguard. Lifeguard. We're in the lifeguard ride and we're trying to make it around. I got an expert sailor over here. Okay, so we've been in the park for about two hours and it hasn't been the most productive, but it's still been fun. So far, we've done two rides and had a snack. Let's see what else we can get in. Next, we were on to the NFPA Rescue Academy for an activity that was a bit of a workout. Then we stopped at Pharaoh's Revenge, which is a unique spin on a ball pit where you can load and fire foam balls from above.
okay, at this point, we've probably been in the park for about uh, about three and a half hours, and our trip has been, at best, mediocre, but it could be due to error navigating the park, but it seems like everything here is not really happening that quickly, and even though the crowd is not huge, the weights are not great, so no more complaining. Let's move on, and let's try to enjoy the rest of this park day. Next. We hopped in line for the Lost Kingdom adventure. Hey, everybody, look at the camera. The Lost Kingdom adventure is a shooting game and a ride where you aim at targets to try and score the most points. Hey, meet my friend. Dog, <laughs> I would love to tell you guys that I actually won this, but fortunately, the guy that worked at the basketball shot had mercy on us. We tried so many shots that eventually he just gave us the prize. So we're very happy about that. Hey, people, tip. If you have friends or family waiting in line, that doesn't entitle you to a place in line next to them. That's still cutting. And I'm seeing so much of that at this particular park. I don't know, maybe it's the holidays. Anyway, be polite. Let's move on. Several of the rides have Lego play areas for the kids to enjoy while waiting in line. Next, the girls hopped onto the Royal Joust ride. The Royal Joust was followed up by a quick run through of the Forestman's Hideout. After listening to a minute or two of the live performance, we entered the Lego Kingdoms area and headed to the Merlin's Challenge ride that both girls enjoy. Next, we wandered into Lego Movie World, where the girls quickly climbed through Benny's Play Ship, which is basically a large playground tower equipped with a slide. Now, it's not often that I take the time to show rides that we don't actually do because the point of these videos is to basically outline our day so you can see what a realistic day in the park is like. But in this particular instance, I really wanted to do this Battle of Bricksburg, but nobody else in the family wants to get wet. Oh well, let's move on. We actually did end up doing the Battle of Bricksburg on our second day in the park, and on this ride, it's pretty much a guarantee that you will get wet. Really? All right, day two in Legoland after just coming from the Peppa theme park, and uh, we just did the Battle of Bricksburg, so we're all a little wet. However, having fun, and already this park day, when it's less crowded, is getting off to a better start. So one of the recommendations is obviously, if you can, try to visit the park at a non-peak time. Now we were on to the Masters of Flight, which is one of those immersive experience flying type of rides. And yes, it was pretty cool. We're coming off the Masters of Flight ride. And this is gonna be the first ride that I recommend. It's definitely worth doing, even though we had a bit of a wait, but it's very similar to things that we've actually paid just to do that activity at different places in the past, but here it's included. And yeah, definitely worthwhile. Make sure your kid's at least 40 inches. We stopped by Emmett Super Suite, where the girls got a chance to meet and take photos with Emmett himself. Then onto the Duplo Tot Spot. which is essentially a playground for small kids. So we've been at this park now for about six hours and what do I think? Um, first of all, it's a full on amusement park with all of the bells and whistles that you would expect from a theme park. But it also has all of the disadvantages too. Today, it being over the holiday period of time, 
we've had some pretty significant waits for the quality of rides that we were wait <laughs> that we were waiting for. But I got to think that if you came to this park during a time when it's not the holiday season, that you probably have a lot of success and spend a lot of your time in actual activities instead of in lines like we have today. Next was the Duplo train, which was a pretty chill train ride. Okay, here we're about to do the Lego race. We're super excited about it. The line wasn't too bad, and let's do this. And finally, we tried a little bit bigger of a roller coaster in the Great Lego Race Coaster. Okay, so it's about 5.30 and we got into the park, I would say at about 10.30 a.m. And so we've been here for about seven hours. The park day is starting to wind down and we are most definitely starting to wind down. We are wiped out and we had a pretty good time. Now, we did do a lot of waiting as opposed to a lot of activities. And so the real question is, would I still recommend this park? And the short answer is, Yes, because I think that a lot of our inconveniences today were probably self-imposed. Not really the best strategy for navigating the park, plus a little bit of dumb luck. I feel like you would have an especially good time if you came to this place during a non-peak time. I think that you would see a lot of benefits. This is about 40, 45 minutes away from like the main Disney and Universal area. And I just got to think that at a non-peak time, you could probably navigate this place easily. It's definitely pretty, well landscaped, has lots to provide for smaller kids, and it's pretty well themed. I didn't know that Lego had such significant themes. Of course, when it comes to theming, Disney is king, but I got to say, overall, I was impressed, and it's worth a visit. The second day we visited was a lot less crowded and it really helped me develop an appreciation for this theme park. And we got the newest member of our family and uh, you're gonna have to work hard. You're gonna have to hold your key. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Until next time, fitness and beer.